Hey everyone, welcome to this radio video. And um, I thought that I would talk today about what's called radio's basement. What is radio's basement? It's basically the lowest frequencies we can receive with regular radios. So uh, these broadcasts are typically from about, you know, anywhere from 10 kilohertz up to about 500 kilohertz. This is what we call the long wave band. The reason I want to talk about it on this channel is, first of all, this channel is devoted not only to shortwave, but I would say, in general, anything from 0 to 30 megahertz. Uh, I do sometimes go a little farther up, you know, 40, 50 megahertz. And um, this is probably one of the great bands uh, for unusual uh, propagation on long wave. Uh, it's really a mixed bag of signals depending on where you are and what you have as an antenna. That's very important. The long wave band requires um, usually very, very long antennas. People that like to DX this band actually often have, you know, like 500 feet wires or 1,000 feet wires, which is called a beverage. Uh, another great way, and probably especially in an urban area like a big city like here in Montreal, I think a loop is probably the best way to go. Now my radio is hooked up on the long wave band to my la my uh, you know 20, 30 feet, 30, 35 feet uh, outdoor wire, which is not the best for long wave listening. Uh, picks up a lot of noise. The first thing you'll notice if you're in a city is that the noise level is very high on long wave. But with a loop, what's interesting is that you can null out the noise. You can actually turn the loop because a loop is very directional. So you can turn it so as to get the least noise possible and the maximum signals. So what can you hear on the long wave band? First of all, in my case, my radio starts at 100 kilohertz. It doesn't go below 100 kilohertz. Uh, my old Kenwood R5000 would go down to 30 kilohertz. So depending on what you have as a receiver, um, if it goes lower, well, there are all sorts of stations. Below 150 kilohertz, first of all, um, signals travel through ground wave. There's no propagation through the ionos ionosphere like the, the AM or medium wave band at night. It's really ground wave, but stations can actually make it thousands of miles. Now, there's a big difference between North America and Europe. In North America, uh, what you'll probably hear most is uh, non-directional beacons. These are beacons from airports. Uh, a great example here is the local beacon UL that is in Montreal's International Airport. And these are intended for plane navigation. In Europe, in most of Europe, between about 150 and um, 290 kilohertz, it is the equivalent of the medium wave AM band in North America they have stations there and actually there are a lot of stations a lot of um, listeners that have really big antennas are close to the ocean on the east coast of north america uh, usually log a lot of these stations uh, you know there's a, a lot of uh, long wave stations from europe that actually make it up to north america but you do need to have very low noise and very big antennas and uh, most of the people that actually log seem to be close to the Atlantic Ocean uh, because open water is always a great, great, great place to uh, send signals. They, they propagate so well. In North America, well, what we'll have is mostly non-directional beacons, but there's a little space that you need to try and listen to, and uh, especially if you don't have too much noise. Between 160 and 190 kilohertz. 
there's a unlicensed this is an unlicensed experimental band so between 160 and 190 you should check for uh, Morse code signals of all sorts um, these are stations that are very low power are limited to 50 feet antenna including the feed line so that makes really short antennas but a lot of these stations have been actually identified thousands of miles away from their location so um, if you want to have a really good challenge try to uh, listen to one of those uh, I've never heard any here because I'm just too noisy in my environment my antenna is probably a little too short but uh, if you have space and you like you know to DX unusual stuff why not try that apart from that if you go higher from about 200 to 430 kilohertz uh, lots of um, non-directional beacons uh, some people like to DX those I actually used to have a log when my noise level was lower, I used to have a log of stations, uh, NDBs from the United States in Canada that I would hear. And I heard, I heard some from you know, hundreds of miles away uh, many years ago. So uh, some people actually like to listen to those and try to log um, these beacons because they are low power in general. And you know, getting a low power signal from 500 miles away is always you know, a cool little challenge. And above 430 kilohertz, if we go above about 400 kilohertz, let's put it to 400 kilohertz. This, for example, is my last non-directional beacon here that I hear. Above that, um, you have some maritime communications. Uh, lots of boats actually use this frequency band. It is less and less used, I must say because most of the transmissions with boats in coastal areas are slowly going to satellites and um, so if you know ship is at sea uh, 500 or 1000 miles away it's probably going to use satellite links instead of using long wave but uh, there still is some logs from time to time from boats using this uh, frequency range so uh, that's kind of the mishmash of signals that you can hear in um, the long wave band. Another little part where you can hear some stuff between about 150 and 175 kilohertz, there's a uh, packet-based network called GWEN that uh, the US Air Force uses. Uh, but I've used, actually I've heard less and less signals from them but uh, there apparently still his, um, there still are signals there. So uh, these, these are things to check for. Um, so why not, you know, take a listen. Uh, even if you only have a little portable with the, in, the little loop antenna inside, um, you know, take a peek and check what you can hear in your area. You might be surprised at the types of signals and um, I used to actually go to this band maybe once a week and tune from you know the lowest part that I could go to up to uh, 500 kilohertz and see what I could hear and that's uh, interesting what you can hear uh, from for 500 to 540 kilohertz there are some Navtex communications with weather bulletins and stuff like that that might be heard also so why not take a peek uh, 500 kilohertz used to be an international distress call and frequency uh, but it is now decommissioned pretty much nobody uses 500 kilohertz and all the stations that used to monitor 500 kilohertz for distress signals have actually um, stopped monitoring this band uh, but you can still check for signals, you never know what you can hear. If I take a, a very quick um, 
listen here. Let's just go through my band and see what you can hear. Lots of buzzing from electronic equipment. That's UL from a local airport. This is a digital type transmission from um, here in Montreal. We have a big maritime, which is we have the St. Lawrence River, which is a big, big uh, seaway for boats that go in North America. They enter through the uh, the Gulf Coast of. Uh, St. Lawrence River um, next to uh, Newfoundland and uh, basically go up the St. Lawrence River we have a series of uh, of dams and you know levers to actually bring the boats up to the Great Lakes where they will uh, send all of these uh, shipments that they get from Europe for example and um, send them to the United States and to the western part of Canada so it's a, one of the biggest and most uh, popular seaways in the world. So we have a lot and extensive communications. Actually, if you have a scanner in um, or a, a VHF, UHF receiver in Montreal, you are happy because there's a lot of signals and a lot of stuff. And I, I often go next to the water of the uh, St. Lawrence River and um, look at boats and listen to the communications from uh, the seaport and also the uh, the boats having VHF comms um, regularly so it's pretty cool so this is a digital signal that is an, um, sent for these types of communications actually for uh, boating and for navigation stuff It's pretty much where it stops because after that you get the medium wave AM band. So uh, you see it's pretty quiet here, but there are some differences. You should, you know, listen different times of day and night. You'll see that there are some propagation differences. Uh, although below 150 kilohertz, there isn't uh, much difference between day and night time. Uh, when you get close to the medium wave band, of course, you'll have the effect of uh, the uh, sky waves that will uh, help you uh, maybe hear signals from much farther away at night uh, getting close to the, the 300, 400, 500 kilohertz bands. So uh, even though there's not that much as that you can hear on um, this video, uh, you know, try it out wherever you live. Uh, in Europe, of course, you have, you guys have a lot of those uh, long wave stations that you can listen to. Um, in North America, we don't have that. We don't have long wave stations. We uh, only have the AM, the what's called the AM band, which is a medium wave band uh, for such stations. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this little uh, video on the basement of radio, which is typically from zero to 500 kilohertz. And uh, if you have a receiver that actually goes there, why not? take a listen. Um, a lot of portable shortwave receivers actually have the long wave band, so that's why I'm uh, talking about this. And uh, maybe you can hear, you know, uh, directional beacons next to where you live. And um, go on the internet. The internet is a great space if you're listening to signals, wonder what they are. 
So thanks for watching 73.